as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker pop wheat and Quaker pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Here's a breakfast I really go for. He's enjoying his Quaker puffed wheat. It <laughs> looks good, too. Mm, mister, it is good. And so is Quaker puffed rice. These king size, ready to serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection. Exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you, too. Makes a thrifty deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. Tomorrow, sure, try this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Fourteen-year-old Peter Connolly leaned against the wind as he walked down the main street in the town of Kelsey. He had been hugging the protection of buildings as much as possible when he suddenly stopped abruptly in front of Angus McDonald's trading post. Golly! Standing just outside the trading post door was the most magnificent dog Peter had ever seen. The dog returned Peter's interest. His tail wagged as the boy approached him. Hi there, fella. Sure are a fine-looking dog. I've never seen you in town before. I'm going to ask Angus about you. Angus. Hey, Angus. Oh, good morning to you, Peter. Is that your dog out front? Huh? That husky out in front of the trading post. Is it yours, Angus? Did you just buy him? Uh, you must be talking about King. King. Boy, that's a good name for a dog as fine as he is. Is he going to be in town all the time, Angus? No. Hold on a minute, lad. Hold on. Calm down. I wish King was my dog. Oh. He's not? Uh, the man that owns him is in the back room. He brought in one of his dogs that had been hurt on the trail. Is the other dog as fine as King? The coon is a fine dog, all right, lad. But there's not another one like King in all the Yukon. I'll bet there isn't. Oh, here comes the man who owns King. Oh, he'd be mighty glad to hear that you admire the dog so. Oh, golly, Angus. A fellow just can't help but admire him. You, uh, talking about King? I was on my way to work when I saw him outside, mister. He's about... Hey, what's the matter, lad? Something wrong, son? You... You're a Mountie. Yes, Preston's my name. Oh. Oh, golly. Mountie. Hey, Peter, Peter. Hold on a minute. Sorry, Angus. Guess I made a mistake. Well, what's the matter with that boy? I don't know what to make of him, Sergeant Preston. Who is he? Peter Connolly. He wanted to meet the man who owned King. But when he saw that you were a Mountie... My uniform seemed to change his mind. Uh, well, no matter. Uh, how's Kuna, Sergeant? A week's rest all she needs. She'll have to stay off that leg. Ah, that's too bad. Your team will be a dog short. Well, can't be helped. Well, it might give the man you're after an edge on you. From what I've heard of Joe Jackson's team, it's no match for mine, Angus. He's a bad one, eh? He murdered a man to make his getaway after a bank robbery in New Trenton. If he'd known there was another witness, he'd probably have two murders on his record instead of one. Sounds as if Joe Jackson is the same kind of a man as Jim Connolly. Connolly? Hey, uh, young Peter's father. Never heard of Jim Connolly. I don't expect you would have, Sergeant. But come to think of it... That may explain the lad's behavior just now. What's the story, Angus? Well, you knew the bank here in town was robbed seven years ago, didn't you? No, I didn't know it. Well, it was. That was before you patrolled this territory. A mounty named Seaton was handling the case. Seaton was killed three years ago. Was Peter's father involved in the robbery? Well, he disappeared just after the robbery and has never been heard of since. 
Neither has the gold that was taken in spite of the reward for its return. I see. He bit off a mite more than he could chew, Sergeant. That gold was part of a new issue, and the rest of the issue hasn't been released. The thief doesn't dare spend what he stole. Did anyone see Connolly commit the robbery? Well, the only witness was shot, so he couldn't identify the thief. Hmm. Connolly's wife here in town? Aye. And if it wasn't for the job young Pete's got in the bank, it's my guess that the two of them would starve. Well, how'd he happen to get a job in the bank his father suspected of robbing? Well, instead of coming to me or a dozen other men that would have been willing to take a chance on him, he went to the bank. He may feel he's got to prove something to the world. Then whatever he felt, Banker Norris gave him a job. The lad goes in early every morning to sweep the place out. He was on his way to work when he stopped here. Did Connolly leave his family destitute? Well, if it hadn't been for Sarah's wee bit of cash, they would have been destitute. She invested in a mine. The mine gave out. So young Peter had to get a job. Seems like a fine boy. And that he is, Sergeant. Any man that would leave a wife like Sarah and a boy like Peter isn't worth the powder to blow him out of this world. Peter likes dogs. Sure, he'd like king. Angus, I may change my mind about leaving Kuna with you. How's that? I'm anxious to get back on Jackson's trail. But before I do, I'll stop at Mrs. Connolly's and... See about having Peter take care of Kuna. Well, if you'd rather do that, it's all right with me. Well, give me a chance to question Mrs. Connolly. You see, Mrs. Connolly, uh, Kuna will need rest until her leg heals. But I don't know much about dogs, Sergeant. Well, Kuna won't need much care. Uh, would you like some more tea? Oh, uh, if you please. Perhaps we could manage if she doesn't need more than rest. Keeping her weight off the leg is all that's necessary. In that case, Pete and I'll be glad to keep her here. Fine. I uh, saw your son at the trading post. He admired King. <laughs> oh, Pete loves dogs, Sergeant. And I can see why King would impress him. That's why I'd like to leave Kuna here. I know she'll be in good hands. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston named and paid Mrs. Connolly a generous amount for boarding his injured dog. And then, with imperceptible tact, the Mountie began to draw from Jim Connolly's wife the story of her husband's disappearance. He found her eager to defend the man in whom she still believed implicitly. But the people in town are wrong about Jim, Sergeant. He didn't steal that gold. I'm sure he didn't. You've never heard from him? No, I... I think he must be... Something must have happened to him. I see. Sergeant Preston, do you think there's a, any chance that Jim might be alive? Why, I don't know, Mrs. Connolly. You know, there might there have been many cases where people have lost their memory. That might be what happened to Jim, if he's alive. It's possible, of course. If you could find him, it would mean so much. I... I was afraid that you'd come to question me after all this time... I don't think I could have stood any more of that. Do you have any of his clothing here in the cabin? Oh, yes, of course. There's an old pair of Jim's mittens in that table drawer. I have them for a moment. Why do you want them? Well, let King get the scent of them. None of our trail ever crosses your husband's. King will know it. Oh, I'll get them for you. Right. For my son's sake, I want Jim to be cleared of the suspicion of robbery and murder. I understand. It isn't right that Pete should have to live the rest of his life with a thing like that against him, Sergeant. Oh, here are the mittens. Thanks, Mr. Connolly. From now on, it's up to King and me. Take them with you if they'll help you find Jim, Sergeant Preston. I can't promise to find him, but I give you my word we'll try. A few minutes later, the Mountie and his dog left Connolly's cabin. Sergeant Preston returned long enough to leave Kuna. Then he and King set out on the trail again. On King! On, you husky! The great dog King knew that this was no routine patrol his master was making. He knew that Preston was looking for someone. And he thought it was the man whose scent was in the mittens that were in the Mountie's pocket. King was constantly alert for the faintest trace of that scent. In Madison City, Sergeant Preston stopped at the cafe to make inquiries. Have you seen anyone who might fit Joe Jackson's description, Sam? Well, uh, yeah. A man fit the description was in about uh, two weeks ago. Tell me everything you can about him. Well, this particular gent was asking if the trail was clear all the way through to Dawson. Yes? An old timer just come from up there. He, he told him the trail was in bad shape near Sagasso. 
The stranger was real put out about it. Back on the trail, King took over. The Mountie noticed the dog's manner and knew that King had caught the scent of the man he was hunting. Oh, you huskies. Oh, no. All right, King, you lead the way. But if we turn here, we'll be circling back. I'm not arguing with you, boy. Go ahead. If Jackson went back to Muldock, maybe Constable Riley will be able to give us some help. Up front, King. And King, run, you huskies. Miles away in Modoc, a tall bearded man entered the bank and closed the door behind him. There were just two people in the bank the man behind the wicket and a man who had just made a deposit. Where'd you get that gold with the rest of my money? I'll have a tidy sum of the bank, eh? I guess you're right. Here's your book. Don't bother putting the gold away. What's that? I said, don't bother putting that away. I'm taking it with me when I leave. And more besides. It's got a gun. That's right. This is a stick-up. You can't get away with this. That was just a warning. Now get back against the wall where I can watch you. Next time, I'll shoot to kill. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. My my hands are up. And you. Open your money drawer and hand over what's in it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Make it fast. I don't have all day. Yeah, I'm hurrying as fast as I can. What? The... Drop that gun, mister. Now put up your hands. Oh, Constable Riley, you... You just came in time. Yeah, I heard the shot as I was coming down Main Street. He shot at Charlie Simmons there. He'd have killed me if I made a move. Well, he won't do any more shooting. Here, Ted, put these bracelets on him. He's going to jail. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Hey, hold on there, partner. What goes on here? I'm a rootin' tootin' cowhand, that's what. Oh, so I see. You look like one, too. Judging from that ten-gallon hat, chaps, boots, spurs and all. <laughs> but look, mister, just you put up those shooting irons of yours and calm down. A fellow ought to know better than to go around waving a pair of six-shooters. Partner, you're right. Dead right. Say, these are just pea shooters. For real excitement, let me tell you about the kind of gun that gives me a bigger kick than a longhorn Texas steer. Oh? Mister, I'm talking about a gun that's got them all beat. Partner, that's the gun that shoots Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Oh, uh, you're telling me. Uh, yes, sir. A fellow with any zip and go to him needs to stow away a He-Man breakfast. Now you're talking. And uh, Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat fills the bill for you, huh? Yeah, partner, does it ever. Just pour on the old milk, add your favorite fruit, and you know What? What? There's no beating this eating. That's what. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls, that's a mighty good tip. So tomorrow morning, be sure to get the drop on a really swell-tasting breakfast. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Important, too, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish extra food value of restored natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Man, oh man, don't miss out another day. Say to mom, from now on, I want to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. The day after the robbery, Sergeant Preston halted his dogs in front of the jail in Modoc. And with the faithful king at his heels, the Mountie walked into Constable Tim Riley's office. Well, Sergeant Preston, doggone it if you're not a sight for sore eyes. How are you anyway? Fine, Tim, and you? I can't complain at all. Hi there, King. Quiet, King. <laughs> Sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. Tim, uh... I understand you have a prisoner named Jackson. Oh, you heard about it, hmm? Yes, I met the bank clerk. He told me you got Jackson right-handed. That's right. You know, he killed a man back in New Trenton. He doggone near killed Charlie Simmons here in the bank. I had circulars on him. I've been trailing Jackson for several weeks. Well, he made a big mistake when he turned his back to the door in the bank. Huh? I took him by surprise. You know, most of them killers are too smart to take a chance like that. Yes, most of them are. I'd like to talk to him, Tim. Well, sure thing. He's in a cell back here. All right. One king. 
There he is, Sergeant. King caught a familiar scent. He knew that the prisoner was identified with the mitten Sergeant Preston carried in his pocket. He couldn't understand why his master gave no indication that here at last was the man they had been seeking. The man King was supposed to find. Perhaps the Maori didn't know. Dog gone, Sergeant. King's all fired excited about something. What is it, fella? What are you trying to tell me? In answer to Sergeant Preston's questions, the great dog King stood on his hind legs. Bracing his front paws on the Maori's arm, he tried to pull Jim Connolly's mittens from his master's pocket. Understanding crossed Preston's face. So that said, fella. Yes, I understand, boy. You want to talk to him in his cell? Yes, Tim. Taking King in with you, Sergeant? Yes. One boy. I'll call when I'm through, Tim. All right. I'll be in the office. Mind if I sit on your bunk, Jackson? Suit yourself. You were pretty careless, weren't you? Because I let that tin horn constable take me? Mm Mm-hmm. My luck just turned muddy, that's all. You think luck has anything to do with it? If I'd had good luck, I wouldn't be set to meet the hangman. There was a bank robbery in Kelsey seven years ago. The thief killed a man making his getaway. Was that luck? If he got away, he was lucky. Oh, he got away. At the same time, a man named Jim Connolly disappeared. What happened seven years ago don't mean a thing to me, Marty. A lot of people in Kelsey think Connolly robbed the bank. You ever been in Kelsey, Jackson? Why? You might know Connolly. His wife and son still live there. Pete's a fine boy. Yeah? Yes. He and his mother have had a bad time of it. What? What do you mean, bad time of it? The mine they invested in gave out? A man should look out for his family. You're about as tall as Connolly. Maybe not as heavy. And, of course, your hair's gray and you've got a beard. Why are you telling me about Connolly? Curious thing about that robbery... The stolen gold was part of a new issue. The rest of the issue has never been released. What of it? I don't give a hang Jackson, about Jackson, the bank in Kelsey is mighty anxious to recover that gold. There's a big reward for its return. Get to the point, Monty. I have a pair of Connolly's old mittens. Here they are, right here. King caught the scent of them. He recognized that scent when we walked into this building. Ah, you win, Preston. I thought my trail was cold. When I heard you took over, I knew it was just a matter of time till I'd be caught. Guess you must have known I deliberately bungled the bank job here. Yes. Why? I fired a shot to bring the constable. Figured he'd shoot me and I'd go out quick and easy as Joe Jackson. It's that he captured me. Now I'll hang. If you hadn't caught up with me, nobody would ever know that I was Jim Connolly. Kid wouldn't be disgraced. You've seen Pete and his mom? Yes, I have. You say they're having a tough time. Well, Pete's going to work in the bank. The same bank you robbed, Connolly. Sweeps the place out every morning to earn enough for food. Oh. Look, Marty. You say there's a reward for the gold. That's right. All right, now I'll do the talking. I got a few cards in this hand, too, Preston. You know who I am. But you don't know where that gold is. No, I don't know where it is. I do know. I'll make a deal with you. I wouldn't try it, Connolly. No, no, I'm not trying to buy you off. Point is this. I know you can take me back to Kelsey and pin that job on me. Only that won't get the gold back. Not unless we find it. You won't. It's true, isn't it, that a man slated to hang gets one request? After your trial and conviction, you'll be granted a final request before your execution. I'm making my request right now. If you grant it, Preston, you'll get the stolen gold back. I want 48 hours of freedom. Freedom? I guarantee I won't try to make a getaway. You guarantee? Your dog is smart enough to trail me clear to Dawson, and I know it. I'd be a jughead to try a getaway. Give me 48 hours, and you'll get the gold. I I don't know. The law gives you Monty's an awful lot of latitude. In fact, you are the law. You can do just about what you please as long as you serve justice. Isn't that right? Yes. Think over my proposition. You won't lose your prisoner. And the bank will get back the stolen gold. Sergeant Preston considered the situation from all angles. Then made his decision. That night, he left his sled in front of the jail and walked to the back of the building. The great dog, King, was beside the Maori when he stopped at a small opening. An air vent in the rear of the building. Connolly. What? Oh, 
It's you, Preston. Your sled's in the back of the building. Your dogs are hitched and ready to travel. You'll have no gun. I know. Now, remember, King and I will be right behind you. I won't forget it. And you won't regret this, Sergeant. There's a key to the cell. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Open the door and go out the back way. Right. And Connolly. Yeah? Good luck. Come on, King. I'll go back to our sled. Sergeant Preston? Yes, Tim. I thought I heard King barking out here. Hey, your sled looks like you're all set to travel. That's right, Tim. Well, there's a good moon out tonight. Be easy to... Hey, did you hear that? I heard something. Sounds like the back door to the jail closing. You're right, Tim. Come on, we'll go in and take a look at your prisoner. That was Jackson. We'll soon know, Tim. Preston, look. The cell door is wide open. Well, he's gone. Jackson's escaped. And this is the key that I keep in my desk. How'd Jackson get a hold of this to unlock the cell? I gave it to him, Tim. What's that? It's all right, Tim. All right? Why, Sergeant, Jackson's a killer. What are you talking about? Saying that you gave him this key. Come on, we'll go after him. Oh, we can overtake him in no time. No, we're not going to overtake him. What? Let him stay ahead of us. I don't understand at all. I'll explain while we travel. Get the dogs up, King. You're right in the sled, Tim. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, Preston. Don't worry. Jackson won't get away from us. I sure hope he don't. All right, fella. And King! The 48 hours Jim Connolly had asked for had almost elapsed. Young Peter Connolly was busy sweeping the floor of the bank in Kelsey. At the far end of the room, the guard lounged comfortably in his chair. We're not open yet. Hey, Pete, you better open the door and tell that bearded gent we're not open yet. He don't seem to hear you. Sure, Mr. Marlin, I'll tell him. I'm sorry, mister, but the bank's not open yet. If you come back in 15 or 20 minutes, you can get in. Well, look, son, I, I'd like to talk to you. Can you step outside for a minute? I, I guess it'll be all right. What do you want? Hey, you ought to have a coat on. Well, I'll be all right if you'll hurry up and tell me what you want. Can't you get a better job than you got here at the bank? Oh, sure. In another year or so, Mom says she'll let me get a real job, like prospecting or trapping furs or something like that. Right now, she says I'm not old enough. Well, what's your... What's your father say? He's been gone for quite a while. There's just Mom and me. What happened to him? I don't know. Mom never said she knew exactly. But he went off hunting one day and never came back. Uh. That's tough, son. Oh, it's, it's not so bad. A lot of people in town think you robbed this bank, but, but me and Mom no different. He just had an accident while he was hunting. Sure, that's it. Uh, his gun could have gone off unexpected and killed him. Well, someday everyone will know he didn't steal that gold. Then me and Mom won't worry when we see a Mountie. Forget that part of it. I robbed this bank. What? I pulled a job seven years ago. That's why I want to talk to you. I got the gold. It's holed up under a big moss-covered boulder in a cave about 15 miles north of town. In fact, that cave is just 16 paces from the big pine tree on this side of Blackstone Creek. Oh, golly. Trouble is, I stuck with that gold. It was part of a new issue. They never released the rest of it after the holdup. If I was to spend any of that gold... The law would be on my neck in a minute. You're the one that robbed the bank and shot the guard. That's right. Now, listen, son. If you can fix it so I can swap what I took for some paper money of the same value, I'll make it worth your while. You could use some cash, couldn't you? Huh? Mister, uh, will you wait a minute? Where are you going? I have to go inside. <clears throat> Mr. Marlin. Mr. Marlin. Uh, what's wrong, Pete? Come on outside quick and... And keep your gun handy. What's that? Hurry. Uh, Don't let him get away, Mr. Marlin. Now, look here, Pete. You've got to tell me what this is all about. That man outside robbed this bank seven years ago. What? And, and he told me where the gold's hidden. Well, kid. Hey, what is this? What this boy says is true, mister. You better reach. You won't shoot me. You better stop, mister. Mr. Marlin, he's getting away. Don't let him escape. Can't hurt, Pete. If I was sure you got that story straight, I'd shoot the critter, but I... There he is, taking <laughs> 
Obeying his master's command, the great dog king raced toward the man he knew as Jim Connolly, growling menacingly. Get away from me! Hold him there, boy. Go your dog off, Monty. On guard, King. Here's our man, Tim. The wedding should take him sooner, Sergeant. That's King and Sergeant Preston. See, Mr. Marlin, Sergeant Preston knows this man's a crook. Hello, Peter. Howdy, Sergeant. I'm the guard in the bank. I didn't know whether to believe Pete or not. This man escaped from the jail in Modoc. Constable Riley and I trailed him here. I saw him running away from the bank. We closed in. Sergeant Preston, he told me he's the one that robbed this bank seven years ago. Oh? He has the gold hidden in a cave near Blackstone Creek. He told me exactly how to find the cave. You mean the Jacksons wanted for robbery here, too? No one ever knew who committed the bank robbery here. Jackson killed the guy who could have identified him. Wait a minute. Isn't there a big reward for the return of that stolen gold? Yes, there is. If the gold is in that cave, Peter will get the reward. Come on, son. Let's you and me go back into the bank. Golly, I forgot all about the reward. Oh, wait till Mom hears about this. I sure hope that gold is in that cave where he said it is. It's there, all right. Time for you to wear the bracelets again, Jackson. Yeah. He's a fine boy. I'm glad I saw him. I saw you watching me, Sergeant, when I was talking to him. Did it look real? I'm sure he'll never suspect the truth. We'll get you out of town right away and take you back to the jail to New Trenton, where you're wanted as Joe Jackson. As long as I die with that name, I'm satisfied. When I call on the boy's mother to pick up my dog, I'll tell her I learned that Connolly died. You'll see that my son gets a reward for the gold. You have my word on that. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks a lot for taking a chance on me. With King on the trail, I wasn't taking much of a chance, Jackson. I knew you wouldn't get away from us. Yes, King, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Say, if you can't make up your mind which you like best... Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either kind of these delicious, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. Always keep a supply of both on hand. Eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. A breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the St. Bernard Dog. Have you ever seen a St. Bernard? They're huge dogs, almost as big as a Shetland pony and very strong. This dog roamed and foraged the wilderness with a wolf for a mate. A strange and unusual combination that helped King and me on this case. An exciting hunt for two bank robbers. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.